Well, hello everyone, and welcome to Spinal Network's podcast series. And uh, we we uh, we have two special guests that I had the opportunity to uh, to meet and get to know a few months back, and um, and and it's been uh, it's been wonderful to uh, to watch what what James and Chelsea are doing up in Canada and. Uh, and to look at some of the good things that that they're doing up there and then try to copy them so uh, oh, here. i think you're already doing that yeah, yeah. <laughs> copy you i, don't I know. think yeah maybe we're copying you exactly <laughs> uh, so uh, first of all for those folks that are um that are on here with us and are uh visually impaired and you're watch happen to be watching the youtube video uh my name's rick I'm in my, I, I'm, I, as much as I'd like to lie, I won't. I'm in my mid 60s and I have, um, uh, for all intents and purposes, no hair and uh, wearing glasses and a gray uh, collared shirt. Uh, my background is our logo. So there's a white background and in blue letters, it says Spinal Network, Independence, Resources and Community. And in between the L of spinal and the N of network is this orange squiggly. And, uh, you know, it, it probably is supposed to represent a spinal cord. Uh, and that's what we'll say, because uh, that's what it looks like to me. So uh, I'm going to uh, introduce you to James and Chelsea, and uh, they can um, introduce themselves. Sure, I'll, I'll go ahead. Sure, I'm James Heckner, uh, 44 years old, almost 45, uh, a spinal cord injury 25 years ago, T6, T7, Asia A. Um, I, uh, I, I have a whole like whole set of hair here, Rick. Um, <laughs> Which I'm jealous. Thankfully, but I did find some grays in there yesterday, so I probably have three grays <laughs> going on. I uh, just got a, what have we got here? A little uh, green hoodie on. Uh, I've got a beard and. Um, and a crooked nose. Oh, and a crooked nose. Yeah, from an adaptive water ski accident. <laughs> <laughs> I'm uh, Chelsea. I am going on 33 years old. Um, I have a, a bun, a top knot in my head. Um, I'm wearing jeans and a floral shirt with pink roses, and um, I just got my eyebrows microbladed, so my eyebrows are on point. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I should have mentioned too, I, I have a spinal cord injury, a T8, a uh, uh, manual wheelchair user, um, well, in June it'd be 46 years post-injury. Mm. So. Um, as much as this should probably be titled aging with a spinal cord injury, it, uh, it isn't going to be titled that. <laughs> and uh, uh, first, I have to say, I, I want to want to let people know how we met. Uh, James and Chelsea and, um, and, and Ryan were, uh, were involved in putting together a documentary called Reinventing the Wheel. And I saw it on, saw the, the kind of the, the uh, preview for it on Facebook. It popped up on my feed and it popped up on the feed of a person who's on our executive committee, Kathy Dunn. And, uh, you know, we were so excited and it was released in Canada, but not yet in the States. So uh, Kathy uh, reached out to Ryan who contacted me and then we had this conversation because we were hoping that that somehow we could view the movie uh, with our movie review group that we hold once a month. And everyone was so gracious and said, absolutely. And so we, we watched well, the movie review folks, watched the movie and then we met and reviewed this. And, you know, in, in all my time, there's there's been a number of documentaries 
you know, on spinal cord injury and life with a spinal cord injury and blah, blah, blah. And, and I've got to say that this documentary, Reinventing the Wheel, was the most real uh, documentary. It, was, it, really, it really portrayed life with a spinal cord injury. It really spoke to all of us who have spinal cord injuries and watch this. It spoke to us. I mean, it was, this is it. This is what life with a spinal cord injury is. And, and so, I mean, I just had to respond with, with my, you know, with these comments. And, and then it was, well, you know, again, another uh, uh, gracious offer of being able to share this with other groups, other chapters of United Spinal. And we had uh, a longer period of time and we did this. And, and in particular, the greater Boston chapter uh, and Heidi, they, uh, they really, again, they, same thing, embraced this documentary and, and had this time where they showed this to uh, their members. And we also did a couple Zoom Q&A sessions, uh, which I would have hoped they would have been better attended. But the folks that were there asked some really great questions. And it was this great, uh, this great open conversation. Uh, and, and I just felt this connection, um, especially with James and Chelsea. And, and uh, I follow their, their group on uh, Facebook, which allows me to, to see, you know, it allows me to watch and see what's going on there so that we can. Yeah. Uh, copy yeah oh, so anyway that, that's how we all met that's that's how we met and uh, so that i had to reach out to james to see if if uh they would be interested in in joining me on uh one of our podcasts and and again it was just this yes so here we are today and so now the first question simply is uh just tell us about um, about yourselves yeah, you go first. You want me to go? <laughs> <laughs> um, Draw straws. Um, well, I mean, I guess, uh, like, I, I've had a, a spinal cord injury for 25 years. So it's, uh, I lived in uh, Alberta at the time. And um, I I didn't overly associate myself with, you know, other, other people uh, in chairs or spinal cord injuries. Occasionally, like, if I wanted to learn how to sit ski or... Um, uh, actually I did have a roommate, uh, in, uh, rehab that I ended up living with after, uh, post rehab as well, which was a, a huge asset to learn off of each other, you know, in those first initial months of, mm -hmm. of, uh, post injury, which of course we all know is, is extremely important. Um, but, but other than that, never really got involved in a community or anything like that until I moved out to British Columbia, so just north of Washington, uh, into the interior here, not not about four and a half hours from Vancouver. But anyways, uh, and even moving out here, you know, it's just still kind of more career driven, working, doing your thing. And uh, and then I guess I, I had a shoulder surgery down in Vancouver and realized going through rehab for a second time in a, in a different rehab facility, just to be able to get to the point where you could wait there uh, on the shoulder and uh, be able to, to return home and, and uh, live independently again. So that was about a three month process post, post uh, shoulder surgery, right? And, but while being down in GF Strong, that's, that's where I met uh, one of our really close friends, Anand and his wife, Kim, who had, had uh Anna and had a uh, quadding accident just had it flip over on him and and uh obviously it happened so quick like all of us know and uh anyways we just kind of started getting together every week for coffee at uh on Wednesdays at one o'clock and that was geez like 13 years ago now that was in 2009 I guess and I mean, we still have our weekly coffee groups here, even in the pandemic, every Wednesday at one o'clock. 
Um, last week we had 11 people. A few weeks ago we had 19 people, and that's you know weekly coffee groups in a mall during a pandemic. So, anyways, it's not necessarily associated with any organization right now because of all of the the restrictions. But people just like to come out and, and have their own coffee. So, since then, I mean, it went from two people to quickly three, four, five, and and now, I mean, our private group has about 600 and some uh members on it all not all of course spinal cord injuries mm -hmm. or disabilities but family members and clinicians and you know it's uh primarily local but has a lot of international um reach so that's mm. um i work for praxis spinal cord institute out of vancouver that's my actual uh employment and um I volunteer as president of Accessible Okanagan, which is a nonprofit group that we started about five years ago. Uh, we have a maximum of 11 board members and all 11 board members need to have some form of disability to be on the board. And uh, the, the members are scattered between about a 300 kilometer range from basically the border of uh, the US called a Soyuz. Mm -hmm all the way up to uh, Kamloops, which is uh, north of us about two hours. So yeah, it's, uh, it's a fairly uh, large region, but not overly populated. I would say maybe about not even 500,000 people, 400 and some thousand people in that area. So yeah, did I miss anything? I don't think so. I mean, like- <laughs> I'm sure I did. And he's I mean, handsome. <laughs> uh, <okay. laughs> Yeah, and uh, my name is Chelsea. I am James's partner of eight years, um, and I'm also the director of Reinventing the Wheel. I've been in the film industry for probably over a decade now. Grew up in the Okanagan um, in, in Canada, and um, I kind of, I never really thought that I would date someone in a wheelchair. I mean, like, it never really crossed my mind, obviously, but um, I had a friend who had acquired a spinal cord injury through a motor vehicle accident and he introduced me to James because James helped him get back on his feet again, so to speak, and took him out for beers and got him to play rugby and do all this stuff. So met James and instantly like was drawn to him and what he did in the community and the group. And I wanted to being a filmmaker, I thought, wow, this like group is super cool. And I saw what it did for my friend. So I thought I'd really love to do a documentary on, you know, accessible Okanagan. So I met up with James, I, I kind of gave him the idea. And I said, this is what I want to do. Like, I find your group really inspiring. Um, <laughs> Oh, it always <laughs> the I word. Oh no. Yeah, yeah. Uh, at the time, drugs. at the time I did though, I didn't know, yeah. you know, like it was eight years ago and I didn't know anything about spinal cord injury and I thought yeah. it was pretty cool. And uh proceeded to tell James the idea about the doc, and then we ended up making out instead. And uh the documentary <laughs> didn't happen. <laughs> but this did. So well, uh, well then that's this perfect segue into yeah. the next question. Yeah. And how did reinventing the wheel come about? So yeah, yeah, absolutely. So eight years later, <laughs> <laughs> um, I knew it was a film that I had always wanted to do because I knew that what the group here in the Okanagan did was unique and special. And I saw firsthand over eight years, you know, what it what peer support did for people and community. Um, and I'm super happy that I didn't do the documentary eight years ago because it would have looked vastly different because my mm -hmm. knowledge and education on SCI was very different back then. So I'm happy that, you know, I was able, we were, we were able to accomplish it now, but a grant came up through um, a local programming called TELUS Story Hive. A grant came up for a um, project on community and uh so I applied for the grant and got it. And it was just a film about, you know, James and the guys and the community and what peer support is. It was supposed to be a 20 minute documentary just explaining the history of the group. Mm -hmm. um, that's what we got the funding for. And <laughs> we, uh, Ryan, Ryan, the producer and cinematographer and myself, you know, chatted about it. 
and we thought, wouldn't it be cool to follow a newly injured person through their first year of life in a wheelchair and how they integrate into community and how peer support, you know, helps people. And I'm like, I don't know where we would find that. And we just kind of toyed the idea around thinking nothing of it. And we heard of uh, Dan McLean, who's a former respiratory therapist out in Kamloops. Um, he was just recently injured in a hunting accident and he had just gotten out of rehab. So three months uh, post-injury. Very new. Very, very new. If I could, you know, now, Dan had a connection with somebody in your group yes. prior to his, if you could just, because I found that to be just, just. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So William, another rookie, quadriplegic, um, he is about two years in um, when we started filming the documentary. He, uh, he was injured in a motor vehicle accident in Kamloops. And when he had his accident, Dan was his respiratory therapist, putting in his trach and taking care of his breathing. And so they developed a bond. And so when Dan was injured, he thought of, and he told us multiple times, first person, yeah. Will was the first person he thought of when he was injured. And he thought, you know, Will's doing okay. I'm going to do okay. And I'm going to be able to get through this. So they reconnected and Will and several other people told us about this individual. Um, I thought, well, that would be super cool. What a great story. Um, and who's comfortable doing that so new? Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. So yeah. We, we called him up. And I think in, in film, you know, when you take, you got to take risks with story. And I was super nervous to call Dan because I don't know, I don't know his personality and when you go through a traumatic experience you don't really want to exploit that and you have a fear of exploiting or you know offending, offending. Yeah. so but I thought you know in film if you're scared to do something that's a really good sign that this movie or that's a risk that maybe you should take mm -hmm. and it's not playing it safe so gave him a call and he was super testament to him and his wife gave him a call and you know, they thought about it, but it was almost an instant yes in that phone call. I don't think they knew what they were exactly getting themselves into. <laughs> they still don't. They still don't. <laughs> but uh, they said yes, and that was the start of uh, start of the film. So we literally, Ryan and I, shot a feature film on a short film budget over the course of the following year. So. Yeah. It was a pretty big commitment, but we're we're super happy we did it. I think there's there's one other like really major point to throw in there is that it's not just you know about community. It's not just about Dan, but it really showcases his wife Colleen as well. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. And yeah. you know what you know what a spouse or loved one uh, you know also goes through, and it's just it's raw. Like they yeah. are so genuine. Yeah in being able to show their emotions, which is, uh, you know, it, it, it's vulnerable, right? And raw. One so. of the, when I watched, every time I've watched this, the, 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 the segment where that, that is just so powerful and impactful is, and I, I guess that um, as you were showing up, it was one of these, you know, roll film. And it was when they they were Colleen and Dan were out at the car try, and he had a light out. And yeah. and Colleen is trying to change this and she just can't. Yeah. And Dan, you know, Dan who had always done this, but, you know, and he can't get in there enough to do this. And and the fact that as you came up and, and decided, hey, roll film to capture this this candid moment that wasn't even on the schedule, yeah. you know, was, but that had such an impact. It was so powerful. Uh, what I watched, I mean, it was, you know, it was one of those moments where you just, you just, you just stop, you know, yeah. I mean, you just stop for a second and go, and just, it's a wow moment. You just go, just wow. Yeah. You yeah. Know, Cause it, we've it, all been there. Oh yeah. You know, I mean, it's so brought me. frustrating. Yeah. brought me right back um i think that's why it was important you know like a 
not all, but I'd say the majority of, of films that are documenting disability are made by filmmakers um, who may have no knowledge of, of disability and that's how it can come off as inspiring. I do mm -hmm. see a lot more people creating films um, with a disability background, um, but because uh, Sam Baxter and I created a blog called Wheel Love and we talked about, you know, we talked about our um, starting to date someone in a wheelchair and that peer support we got from each other and it developed another community of, of women and men and family members, but like those little things can also be very big things. And, uh, you know, we call them blue, we call them blue jobs, blue jobs, <laughs> you know, sometimes we got to do a blue job and it's not very fun. But uh, when Colleen had that hood up, you know, when we say roll camera, it's because, you know, that's something that she's not used to. She's not used mm -hmm. to opening the car and digging in there. That's, you yeah. know, Dan's world. And so, yeah, yeah, you know, that something as little as changing a light bulb can be hugely significant um, in yeah and your healing and trauma yeah. and grief yeah. yeah you know it brought me right back in in that first year you know that rookie year you know we yeah. always refer to that rookie year you know when i had things going on with the car and i had always done them and the same thing i'm now i'm asking my brother-in-law i'm asking friends and and but when i got into the kind of year two and and because of of, of a particular person that I met who was my peer mentor and we became best friends, um, you know, to the day he, he passed, he passed in, um, in um, uh, he passed 24 years ago because he, he passed on my oldest son's birthday, hmm. which is two weeks after my twins were born, you wow. know, so it was just like, oh, geez. and, um, but, but Larry, you know, met Larry, and he just, you know, okay, here's how you go up and down curves. Here's how you go downstairs. Here's how you go up and down escalators. Here, all the things that you're certainly not going to learn in rehab. Back when I went through rehab, you know, they they were freaked out when I made a transfer without a transfer board. You know, I didn't. You know, oh, let me get the transfer board. It's in the trunk. And when they came back, I was in my chair, and they're going, oh, no, you know, and I'm like, oh. but you know, after you know, I, I realized, wait, I can still do this, you know, and I would transfer into the engine compartment and work on it or, or, you know, you know, I'm under the car and, and changing the starter and, you know, in the snow and, yeah. um, you know, but, but that rookie year, you don't think of any of that stuff, you know, and you're looking and you're having to rely on somebody else. And so when that particular scene occurred, and I'm watching this, it was, it was like, again, that wow moment, because it brought me right back 45 years, you know, to that, that, that rookie year. And yeah. Um, so, yeah, what a. Yeah. And I mean, yeah, again, like true testament to Dan and Colleen, because, you know, we just rocked up with a camera and uh, Dan came out, didn't even say hi, he just kind of did his thing. Um, they really understood the assignment of like, there's gonna be cameras here in these moments, but we're just gonna go with it and pretend like it's not. And yeah, um, yeah. And yeah, yeah it was, I, I still to this day, I'm like, I don't know how you guys, <laughs> it was hard for me to watch, you know? Yeah, yeah. And Ryan, like we were, we were emotional watching it too. And uh, yeah, just very grateful that they were, not many people would be that vulnerable. They'd probably yeah. just tell us to shut it, shut the camera off, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So, so it's pretty cool. What's the connection with Ryan? Um, Ryan's been my, uh, Ryan and I kind of grew up in the film industry together. We started working on uh, like feature films here in the Okanagan. Mm -hmm. um, then we decided to make a short documentary together, probably over a decade ago so. on like a local legend here in the Okanagan, an old cowboy that used to dance at this, oh, this bar. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, yeah, we made a short documentary together and it blew up here in, in our uh, area and uh, everyone loved it. And we, yeah, we won a couple film festivals with it and we thought, oh, maybe we should work together more. 
And we've just been working together ever since. We have a really good partnership. We work creatively well together. And uh, yeah, so he's he's been, you know, watching me like he watched me navigate a new relationship with someone with a disability as well. And he's been involved in the community. So yeah, that's kind of how we, they we made, met. They made a very uh, sensitive movie called... Uh, we all love, we all love yeah. movie, I guess it is. And I've, wa I've watched that. Yeah. yeah, it's, uh, I've watched that, yeah. I look back on it and I'm like, geez, what was I doing? <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> yeah. well, that was to talk yeah. about, you know, uh, you know, film, you know, with cameras being on at, at, you know, you know, moments when you're so vulnerable. And, yeah. and that, that movie was, I mean, I, you know, anybody who watched that movie, who just didn't connect and and just feel, you know, somebody just reaching in and gripping your heart, you know, is is they don't have they don't have a heart if they can watch <laughs> that and not feel yeah, that was just uh, yeah I just I watched that and and then when when um, we had talked later and you mentioned that I went back and watched it a second time and it was just like oh wow Aww. just wow I mean. Well, it definitely pulls, right? I mean, it's, you yeah. know, infertility, especially with SCI is, uh, mm -hmm. you know, you see it on, on a lot of the posts and all that, you know, every, everybody, not everybody, but a lot of people, many people, mm -hmm. uh, you know, experience the challenges of that and, and have to navigate the, the resources and such available. And then how far do you want to take it? Right. Yeah. It's not that it, yep. it's impossible. I mean, there's definitely avenues that you can you can do for that. But yeah, it's a it's a it's a it's yeah. a road. Yeah, it's a long road. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. It, it, Karen and I went through that and we, you know, we were one of, you know, the fortunate couples, you know, I mean, um, you know, and we talk in depth about that with when Kenny and Claire uh, Salvini and I did the podcast on uh, SCI infertility and pregnancy mm -hmm. and and the I mean because it's a long road yeah yeah we it worked for us but it was still a long road yeah, you know yeah. and um and and you know and you're just so fearful you know when it does work you're fearful through the entire pregnancy that yeah. nothing's going to happen you know and yeah. and um so so yeah it's um that, that's such a uh um it's a it was yeah it's a tough it's a tough thing to talk about i'm happy yeah. that it's not taboo to talk about it, that yeah. film was made probably three years ago and it felt taboo to talk about it then which mm -hmm. um but now i think a lot of people are talking about infertility, sex with disability, mm -hmm. um, and I think it needs to be talked about even more because oh, yeah. that's, you know, yep. when we all get together and chat, I mean, like, probably sex is the only thing that comes up all yeah. the time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. Yeah. it does, you know, I hate to say it, but it is you know and it's maybe true. for you guys too. maybe for us no. but um <laughs> <laughs> but yeah no i i'm happy that people are starting to open up about this because mm -hmm. um the reason for real love was just to make people feel like they weren't going through that themselves because it yeah. can be very isolating yeah. yeah so just really wanted to make sure people knew that you know this was a thing and it's okay to feel like sad and happy and all the waves of grief and um you know, excitement and all of that. It's definitely a wild ride. But I'm, and Ryan directed that film as well. And he's mm. like super happy he was there um, to go through that process with mm. us. So, so, so since reinventing the wheel, yeah, what's what's happened with with you two and 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 the the other the other uh, folks that were in it in, or just part of your group. Yeah. Well, Jeez. the pandemic happened. Yeah, the pandemic. Happened. So that was cool. It was a tough one because I mean, when when the movie was was released, when it was mm -hmm. available, it was right in the in the heart of the uh, you know beginning of the pandemic, and it mm -hmm. was like, and it was. I think that we were all super excited. The community was excited to be able to have a big party. We love to party. 
yeah and uh have a have a community showing of it and i mean it it was uh i think that was a that was a little bit sad you know having to do it online or do mm -hmm. a you know a streaming session but you know we got through that and we've had multiple parties since smaller parties <laughs> but uh yeah, yeah so but other than that i mean i think you know, like yeah the movie the movie came out and I think what's cool about it coming out in a pandemic is that it, it kind of had a, a bigger outreach, which was pretty yeah. cool because we had to adapt, you know, um, with a capital A and mm -hmm. really figure out how to get this thing out without doing a screening or a mm -hmm. tour or anything like that. So I think doing it online was cool in a way for the outreach and meeting new people like yourself uh -huh. mm -hmm. and people from Australia, mm -hmm. New Zealand, Ireland, um, all the messages that we were getting and people watching it. So that was really cool. And as far as our group goes, you know, something like a pandemic and this film, I think it just really strengthened our bond mm -hmm. and our friendships. And, you know, Colleen and I um, have become really close and can't go a few days without talking mm -hmm. on the phone. And uh, Dan is doing really well. He's coming up on his, is it his third year? Chairversary in April. Yeah, it's gotta be, yeah. Yeah, and he, uh, he fills his time a lot. He plays uh, wheelchair rugby, wheelchair basketball, sled so hockey, hockey hand cycling, hand cycling. Water, or I mean, uh, yeah. snow skiing he's sit skiing now yeah. he went off tether the other day and and hit a four-year-old girl and <laughs> dropped her in a dropped her in his lap so he's <laughs> doing good <laughs> dad will kill me that i told that story <laughs> um but yeah we're you know it's been really cool to watch you know dan and colleen and kind of you know start to like settle into that new normal them and their family so that's been pretty cool yeah yeah, and then mm. as far as Stu and Will and those guys are concerned, they're still up to their old shenanigans. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Stu's birthday yesterday, so they of, <laughs> yeah. course, they of course had to have a little yeah. get together. But yeah, it's... yeah, nothing changes, Rick. They're all yeah. just they're all still crazy and yeah, yeah. doing crazy things and driving me crazy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it, it's funny because people think that you know, okay, you have this whatever traumatic event occurs, and you end up with a cord injury and you're in a chair and and you know everybody thinks oh you know this person's you know even if it's been years oh this person's angry you know or is because of this or or you know geez this person is really kind of a bit of an ass you know you know and and, and i'll yeah. tell them i said well it wasn't because of the accident no, no. Said, if, you know if they're an ass now they were an ass then yeah, yeah you know yeah. that didn't change you exactly. know if they were a good person then they're a good person now you know yeah. i mean it's you know the, the person's the person yeah they now there's additional things to to deal with and work with but as far as that goes no if they you know, whatever they were before they're still that person yeah now. exactly you know, and no such thing oh yeah. it's funny you mentioned that because one of our uh friends who's in the movie there scotty uh, Scott James, he he was an angry, angry fella, mm -hmm. uh, especially when uh, when I met him there, I don't know, 13 years ago or something, just, uh, you know, struggling, things were things were a little tough, but anyways, and you're right, no, he's still an angry fella, but <laughs> he, he, he he's an angry fella with a smile on his face. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Claudia, yeah. He's going to kill us for he's that. He's going to, yeah. He's <laughs> but you know, Rick, like the, the movie, as much as we made it for the community and to show peer support, the really interesting and cool thing to come out of it is the community members that watched it that don't know anything about spinal cord injury, don't know anything about disability. And, you know, it made them, we've heard this multiple times where able-bodied people who um, are very ignorant to spinal cord injury, not in a bad way it's just they've never been surrounded yeah, by yeah, it yeah. you know say i feel uncomfortable talking to someone in a wheelchair i don't know how to talk to someone in a wheelchair you know i feel bad for someone in a wheelchair yeah. and we've heard a lot of people in this film say oh man i just want to hang out with those guys right. they look like so much fun or they said you know it made me feel like if i got injured that i would be okay you know that i would 
look for those guys or mm -hmm. I'd look for someone, you know, cause I think that I would be okay. And that, that was pretty cool to hear yeah. the able-bodied community come out and say, oh man, those, those guys drink beers. Yeah. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. totally. Uh, <laughs> yeah. 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 But yeah, yeah and, and we heard a lot of that from the folks down here who watched it that, that yeah. weren't in chairs. Yeah. It was the same thing. And, um, you know, because I keep telling people, you know, I don't know how to talk to somebody in a chair. I said, well, what if that person was standing up next to you? Could you talk to them? Yeah. And they go, well, yeah. Well, then make believe in your mind that person is standing up next to you and just talk to them like you okay. would normally. Yeah. You know, the chair should just disappear if you want to have that conversation. Exactly. So, but, uh, but yeah, people, you know, in, in one of the things, actually, there's a couple, but, but, you know, when you talk about, I, I want to hang out with us, that's what we heard. It was Halloween, Las Vegas, we need to join them. And I said, yes. I'm in. Yes. And then a bunch of people said, yeah, I'm in too. So, you know, hopefully maybe this, uh, this Halloween, hopefully things will have calmed down a bit and we'll be settled into whatever the new normal is going to look like. Oh. And, you know, and, and, you all are heading down to Vegas for Halloween ah. and, and we're all hanging out. We're all heading out there to join you and hang out. So uh, yeah, that, you know, was, that was a big thing. Yeah. No, no better place, Rick. Like, you know, if there's going to be a wheelchair convention, <laughs> I mean, could you, can you even count the number of accessible rooms there are in Vegas? Mm -hmm. We're into the thousands. Yeah. Yeah. And not only that, but direct flights from all over North America. Yeah. Like, yeah. We'll fill them all. Like, yeah. Really and because, yeah, uh, you know, I can sit there and I'm in the air for 25 minutes when I fly right. to Vegas. Yeah. yeah. You know, so, yeah. I mean, I could do the drive, but I go, why? I yeah. think we're like two hour flight from, from here to Vegas, yeah. from Canada to Vegas. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But, uh, yeah. It's, um, yeah, and, and I know if there's people, you know, that are part of our group that want to join, you, you know that there's people associated with some of the other chapters of United Spinal yeah. that are going to want to join. So, uh, um, yeah, and then the other thing that, um, that, you know, it's folks in the spinal cord injury community, um, you know, all, all just... Oh yeah, oh yeah, and, and I, I think Brown Alert, right? Oh, code, yeah. brown. code, code brown, code, code brown, and oh, yeah. uh, and everybody, you know, that from the paralysis community, were just going, oh yeah, I, I, maybe I didn't call it that, but oh yeah, you know, yeah. <laughs> and uh, and then you get those outside of of the community, you know, who are just, you know, there's, I mean, really that made them really uncomfortable or uptight, uh, you know, and I'm sitting there going, oh, well. Yeah, it happens. Yes, yes. Yeah, it yeah, yeah. When, it, when it's really bad, Rick, it's a Mexican blowout. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? It, it was very important to Ryan and I that we touched on that because oh, yeah. it, it's literally a part of life. And it's something yeah. that, you know, can really um, hold someone back who's newly injured as well. And people need to, that's something that people relate to and you need to talk about it. Yeah. Like you have to, yeah. you can't make a movie about SCI and not talk about bowel and bladder. Oh, yeah. the anxiety, right? And I think that's what yeah. drives it so hard in the yep. first, first few years. Like it did take me a good Three, three years right off the bat, five years probably in total to, to start to have that feeling where you're you're leaving the house and you're not even questioning, you know, you're having you're you may you're having an issue or you may yeah. have an issue. Yeah. Whereas yeah. in that in those first couple of years, even going to get a haircut, you're worried that uh, you might have an issue. And then of yeah. course it's the the time it takes afterwards and the frustration and all that to, to get, get Humpty Dumpty back together again. Yeah. So. Yeah. 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 Really. And, and, and that, when I talked earlier about why this documentary was, was the best that I've seen, it was because it was so real. And that was one of the components that made it so real. 
-hmm. So, you know, it was um, because, yeah, and it's just never talked about. I mean, it is within, you know, when when we all talk, but, you know, in general, it's oh, that's still a taboo subject. Yeah. You know, it's it's uh, that even comes before sex, you know, as far as being taboo. Yeah. So I will bladder. Yeah. yeah. I will bladder yeah. right off the bat. We, we had a, this was pretty cool. Like this made me, it sounds so silly, but this made me feel like really happy was we had a, a Q and a session for one of our screenings and a gentleman came on and mm. he, he shared, he openly shared on the Q and a, he said, you know, I was out with my friends and I had an issue and I came home and I was just super pissed off about it. I was super mad, not happy. And he goes, and then after I got everything, you know, cleared away, straightened up, I watched Reinventing the Wheel. And he said mm-hmm. it just made him feel validated. Validated. Yeah. Yeah. So like yep. relatable. And he said, you know, like I needed that in that moment. And that was pretty I'm like, okay, yeah. well, that's why we make exactly. Yeah. Movies. Yeah. You know, that's why we made it yeah yeah, yeah. it um yeah i mean it's 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 58 minutes correct yeah it's, you know so it's 58 minutes and in, in it's not even an hour and yet in that time you you know you connect with with you know every member of that of that that group that was that was really focused upon, you know, and, and you connected with each and every one of them. Mm-hmm. You know, you felt like, wow, you know, I've got a, I've got a whole bunch of new friends yeah. when, yeah. when you finish. Yeah. And, and, you know, that doesn't, that doesn't happen in, in very many, you know, in very many movies or, or documentaries that just doesn't happen, but it happened with this one, you know, because, and, and it was just so real. I mean, when, you know, when Dan and Colleen they drive up and, and it's just you're on the, the lake, you know, and yeah. and, um, you know, you've got jet skis and and stuff and they pull up and they're kind of getting out and you see all these people around, you know, and and that was that again, you know, it's this is a whole new community to them, yeah. you know, yeah. where, where they, oh, yeah. they're not quite sure. If they fit or where they fit. Yes, yeah. you know, so we're here. They're getting out of the vehicle and kind of tentatively, you know, moving up. And and Chelsea, I, was it you were the first one that you came over? I believe in the film. You came over and said, you know, hey. And, yeah, and, uh, that was the first time I met Dan and Colleen. You know, so it kind of you know, yeah. boom, broke the ice right away. You know, and and all of a sudden it was okay. Now we're a little more comfortable. And and yeah. by the end, you know, where's Dan? You know, he's out on the water. <laughs> You know, so yeah. so yeah, yeah. And, and and at the end, um, when he skied, mm-hmm. when he skied, and and he stops at the end, and the camera's on him, and and just this, I mean, this 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 joy on his face, you know, that not only did I just do something that I love doing, but I just did something that I didn't think I could do. Yeah. And I did. Oh, you're making me cry. Right uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, it was just, uh, you know, yeah. It. Um, and that was yeah. less than a year post injury. Yeah. So, yeah. like, you know, that I think that's what's pretty neat is all of this, like the traveling, the, you know, trying to figure out how best to to do, you know, a bowel routine on the road, like what what you might need, <laughs> what you can yeah. afford. I mean, that's a big thing for most of us as well. Yeah. Yeah, um, because a lot of times we're only as good as our equipment, you know, depending mm-hmm. where and what we want to do. Yeah, and uh, yeah, for him him to pack all of that in in less than a year. Yeah, um, I mean, we we literally threw him in the deep end. Yeah, but yeah. that's a testament to 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 you both and, and your group. You know, the, the I mean, group threw him in the deep end. Yeah. That, that <laughs> was a, that was a yeah. community. It's more about pure pressure, Rick, than it is peer support. So. Yeah, <laughs> it, you know, it really yeah. is. You know, it is. It in and you know, in, in the right proportion, and 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 that's you know. But for all of us who have gone through it, you know, we we know how much to push, and and then when maybe when to pull back a little. That's bit. That's right. You know, but yeah. but um, but because we know that, and we 
we do it in, in correct amounts, that's what pushes that person to the next level and the next level and the next level. And um, where all of a sudden they're, they're no longer the, the mentee, but now they're a peer mentor and, 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 you know, saying, you know, now it's my turn to help somebody. That's right. You know, and, really, and uh, yeah, really hope that this film is, is used throughout communities, but research as well. I mean, when yeah. you research peer support, there's no real tangible way to measure exactly the outcome of peer support, where I think this film gives you, an, you know, a one person's perspective of, you know, how peer support can improve your mental health, it can mm -hmm. improve your independence, it can also keep you out of the hospital, you yeah. gain more knowledge of pressure, sores, bowel, bladder. Mm -hmm. so, it's such a win, 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 win when you get involved in community. Yeah. Um, you know, you kind of you kind of hope that this gives some evidence to that. Mm -hmm. Or create it. Yeah. Like I think that's yeah. that's the big thing that uh that I really took out of this movie is that it's getting over that intimidation, meeting somebody, whether that be at the mall, the grocery store, maybe it's online, mm -hmm. you know, whichever it is. And just starting to uh, create that uh, uh, camaraderie or commonality, uh, friendship, and and feeding off of each other for that. I mean, mm -hmm. we we've literally chased people down in the in the mall, or I, I've actually pulled people over while I was driving and just asked them, you know, where where are you from? What are you doing? You know, uh, do you want to get involved? In a, in a sense and and sure enough like we, we all do that in our community i find is we if there's somebody wandering around the street in a wheelchair that we don't know <laughs> it's it, unlikely it, yeah. 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 yeah yeah sometimes that's called stalking yeah well, <laughs> well can't run them over only for like 30 seconds not yeah. for like days <laughs> oh yeah i had a uh kind of a similar experience because you know our group doesn't it's just not open to folks with spinal cord injuries it's really you know uh, people from the paralysis community you know if people are using a manual or power wheelchair for their mobility yeah. then we want them you know to join with us you know if they're a a rehab professional I mean, we want them to join with us. Sure. If it's a family member or friend, we want them to join with us. Yeah. I mean, you know, because that's what creates a community. Yeah. And, and so I was doing this little show in San Diego, and this is back when, when our name was the Southern California chapter of the National Spinal Cord Injury Association, which it was a good thing that the banner was six feet wide <laughs> to, 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 you know, for that name. Yeah. And uh, so, you know, and so I'm, I'm there and it's this beautiful day in San Diego. Mm -hmm. And this young woman is rolling towards me and she's got this, you know, this smile on her face. And she's, you know, I'm thinking, oh, great. Someone's going to come over. We're going to have a great conversation. I can just tell. And so as she's wheeling, wheeling towards me and she kind of looks down at the banner and then this, this, this crestfallen look, you know, oh. and, and she kind of turns away. So then, you know, being the, the, uh, you know, the, the quiet, uh, you know, introvert that I am, you know, I went uh, went chasing after, you know, and wait, wait. And, you know, I'm glad she didn't call for security. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, you know, and, I, and the same thing, I tracked her down and just said, you got to tell me. I mean, you were heading towards the booth and I was all I was all set to have this great conversation with you. And then you kind of just, you turned away and she goes, well, because it said spinal cord injury. I don't have a spinal cord injury. I have spinal oh, bifida. Right. Wow. And, I, and I went. That is a Wow, I said no, no. You come back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and actually, that uh, you know, I I shared this with a number of chapter leaders across the country, and we went back to the national group, and and they had already been thinking about you know a name change, and and I think when we all came to them and said you know the same thing is, you know this is what's happening and. You know, so they changed, they went through the process and changed the name to United Spinal Association. And they went through all their literature and everything. And instead of where it said SCI, they put SCI slash D, you know, so yeah. that it would, you know, it would encompass, you know, uh, all of those folks in the yeah. paralysis community. And um, so, so yeah, that was, 
you know, and she ended up joining our chapter and, and all. And, and um, so, yeah, that was, you know, that was my stalking story. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we've expanded. It's, we, we've never kept it uh, kind of exclusive. It's just been any, you know, yeah. any, really anybody that has some sort of affiliation, you know, with, uh, with our community members that have disabilities, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, it is a private group, so we we do get a, a lot of uh, membership requests from all over the world. But I mean, mm -hmm. it, the whole point of, and I feel like one of the main successes of what this particular community has is by keeping it keeping it relatively closed, because mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of channels that are you know have an awful lot of resources and members on it that people can access from around the world. But this is more meant to to keep it more connected and, and interactive internally. Yeah. There's a lot of questions and uh, comments that pop up. And of course, local events that get organized uh, throughout the area. So we do have a public page, which isn't nearly as, as active, of course, but mm -hmm. yeah, and I find that that, you know, having these social media channels like that nowadays is probably one of the biggest uh, successes. Yeah. That, that we have and being able to keep that networking and, and uh, community uh, alive and thriving. So, yeah. yeah. That and consistency. Consistency. Yeah, yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We ended up uh, bringing on a social media intern. We have this uh, young man, uh, uh, Ethan, who um, uh, we connected with through uh, a, um, a friend of ours who works in the community college network in San Diego. And she found Ethan for us. And, and Ethan is, is very, very organized and, uh, and he very bright. And, um, and since he has come on board uh, and we, we only get him for just a few, I think three to four hours um, a month. But in that time, he, I mean, he, again, he's so organized and, and, you know, I sent him something and within, sometimes within an hour, it's already posted on four different platforms. And, and so we've had a lot of our in folks that have, that have gone and liked or followed us on social media, uh, you know, that it's been a nice upward curve. Uh, the number of new members uh, has, you know, to our chapter is also at a nice upward curve. So, um, you know, so social media is very, very uh, powerful. But, um, so, so with the documentary, I know it's it's streams in Canada. Mm -hmm. So, and there was a world premiere. Uh, yeah, so, which was really, well, we were stoked about it. The it was world. amazing yeah. where the people were coming from, like yeah. New Zealand, Australia, UK, yeah. of course, uh, uh, Europe, yes. the, Africa. I mean, the world. It was so cool. It was a world. Yeah, world. <laughs> Isn't it? It's a world. That's a true world. Yeah. Premiere. Yeah. Yeah. So, so since that world premiere, mm -hmm. what has opened up for you? Uh, is it is it available to stream in the US or available to stream in other parts of the world? Yeah, absolutely. So we now have it to for rent or purchase mm -hmm. on Vimeo, which you can find it on um, our Facebook uh, site on Reinventing the Wheel, mm -hmm. uh, the movie. And yeah, it, it's available around the world to stream, purchase or rent. And then we also encourage community members, research facilities, mm -hmm. uh, community organizations to send us a request if they want to use the film for education or mm -hmm. sharing or just any type of, you know, anything to benefit the community. Um, we'll give them a promo code. Like we're not in it to, yeah. to make a dollar on this film. We just, we really want to, to spread it out and make sure that it gets in the hands of the right people. Mm -hmm. um, it's already in, you know, GF strong rehab facility, any rehab facilities. We'd love to get this film in front of newly injured people. Yeah. So they can relate and try and, you know, just encourage to get into community as soon as possible. So that's really the main focus is like, it would be great to know that this film is, is available in, in all rehab facilities. 
that's kind of the goal. Yeah. Yeah, just as a as an education resource, uh, you know, completely free because it's it's educational material and, and hopefully, you know, an incentive or encouragement to uh, to help people get over that you know that initial kind of fear factor and uh, and meet people, get connected, get involved, mm-hmm. whether that be with community, whether that be with sport, whether that be, I mean, it doesn't matter. I, I mean, you, we know a lot of, you know, athletes, you know, Paralympians and such. And I mean, they're, they're one of their biggest successes or what they would feel a success was just getting involved in sport and meeting mm-hmm. athletes, which was, you know, peer support uh, as well. So yeah, I mean, any, any rehab facility, any, you know, maybe clinical education session that, uh, um, or sorry, institutes that, you know, are, uh, are most likely going to have patients with SCI, you know, this might have a little bit more, uh, provide a little more understanding to spinal cord injury. Obviously, you know, we've got, you know, the, the huge level of, of injuries and in this, mm-hmm. this particular film primarily focuses on a higher level quad with, uh, or sorry, higher level para with um, some lower uh, level tetraplegics. Mm-hmm. But, um, and of course, this particular show is more men circling around men. We've also got a, a ladies group here that gets together as well. So, but, uh, you know, those are the things that I think need to be, need to be expressed and, and uh, people just to be, feel comfortable yeah yeah um, yeah I, I, as as you're saying that wheels are turning um uh, in in my own head and i'm going well why doesn't sharp rehab why haven't they requested this and, and or somebody who somebody just put me in touch with with a, a woman who's opening up a a um kind of a therapy um business down in nonprofit down in san diego and you know and part of her target market is the spinal cord injury community. So, uh, you know, and I'm thinking, well, she should know about this, you know, and, um, and, and what, and I'm just, this is a, maybe a crazy question, but what about an organization? If they were to buy the film, could they, and I, I, this sounds like I'm trying to, circumvent the, the the process but say say spinal network bought bought the film could we share show that or let others show see that yeah. or or is there a kind of a you know when people buy a buy software and it's a license for one computer but then you can buy a license for 10 computers you know is there maybe a copy of the film that that where you buy that where it's really you know, it's something where you could, use, where we could use that okay. more openly. Yeah, yeah exactly. absolutely. absolutely. And we're like, we're just, we just want the film to be seen. Yeah. You know, the reason we have it up too is because once you, once you put a film on YouTube, it kind of just goes there to die. Stars, we call yeah. it the, the movie graveyard, you know? <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> but though it, um, the way we have it up, it, yeah, it's able to be shared, um, downloaded, rented, any any kind of thing and we just we highly encourage people to just reach out and you know um let us know like how they want to use the film and we'll we'll give it to them so yeah because yeah. you know i just thought that you know and and maybe maybe we try this as a as a to see if it works and if it works then maybe it's a template to share with other with the other 46 chapters of mm-hmm. united spinal but um you know, to see how we can offer, offer it for viewing, if we buy it, but offer it for viewing on our website, where they just, they click on a link, just click a button, and it takes them to, you know, whatever, wherever it is, you know, type thing, um, you know, to encourage rehab professionals, and to encourage uh, new injuries, to, you know, to, to spend it an hour to, you know, yeah. you know, invest an hour, yeah. really invest an hour in this film because what, what you take from it will be, will be well worth 
that investment, you know, that type of thing. So hmm, yeah. I'll, I'll have to Ponder, we can talk about this, you know, off camera. Definitely. Off camera. Yeah, it's it's de it, yeah, it's definitely obviously not about the money. It's mm -hmm. like that, uh, you know, to get the film out there and just have it, you know, have it. Well, I mean, it is out there. It is being seen a lot. But you know, just having more people be able to understand and relate to the same situation, so that they they feel they they're validated. Yeah. And yeah. And you know, encouraged. And uh, like all of us have been there. I mean, it's it's a unique uh, a unique injury, but uh, it doesn't change the circumstances wherever you live in this world. So it's so all the same same challenges when it comes to comes to uh, a lot of the same challenges when it comes to the spinal cord injury. Yeah, 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 and, and yeah. I mean, you know, every spinal cord injury is unique. We, you know, you can take you know, 10 folks with a T8 injury and you're going to get 10 different, you know, uh, needs and, and um, you know, levels of function and, and whatever. Uh, but yeah, there's a whole long, there's a long list of things that are just common to us all. Yeah. And, um, and, and when people realize that and they're able to open up and talk you know, within their community um, about it, then, it, you know, things change. You know, all of a sudden the sun, the sun shines a little bit brighter, you know, right. so. Um, <laughs> yeah. and, and, and when we started this and I talked about 35 to 45 minutes and James was talking about, well, 30 minutes is probably, you know, right on. And I just looked at the clock and went, well, what about an hour and five minutes? <laughs> Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. So see, yeah, you know, it's, it's just that's it's just what happens when you get people that enjoy talking and enjoy talking with each other, and yeah, it's right. a great subject. That yeah, I mean, yeah. it just goes. So so for the the folks that are listening to this podcast on their one hour lunch break, <laughs> and, and you got to, you got to a point and said, "Damn, I'm not gonna I can have to listen to the end of it later." Uh, so, <laughs> <laughs> the, one, the one big takeaway they should have on this is uh, a Fremont Street, Vegas for Halloween. Like, yes, you know, it doesn't matter where you book, what you book, whatever. It's like 2022. All of a sudden, you got uh, 5,000 wheelies down there on Fremont Street. And, wow. <laughs> It'll happen. Yeah. Well, you know, you know, we do, uh, United Spinal does their chapter leader meeting in Vegas. Nice. And they didn't when do it. It was that? virtual last year, but it's in October, but what? Not, not at the end of October, unfortunately. That would be, that would have been, that would have been too, too good, too good yeah. to be true. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, but yeah, so I mean, you know, you've got, you know, a whole group of folks in chairs, you know, same thing, wheeling around Vegas, you know, for three or four days. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, but, but probably more reserved. Uh, <laughs> yeah. having, having just watched the end of the the documentary i'm thinking maybe they're a little more reserved than well let's oh, we're let's just older. say the, the movie was pg-13 yeah so, <laughs> yeah if you look a little closely into the footage of vegas you'll see some unusual Activity. costumes <laughs> I'll just put that in there. But it's Halloween. Uh, we'll leave it at that. That's right. Yeah, it's Halloween. That's right. <laughs> and Halloween in Vegas. Yeah. That's right. But like, uh, just want to say like a huge thank you to you guys yeah. for being such advocates and cheerleaders for the film. Like, it's been such a pleasure to get to know you, Rick, and your chapter. And yeah, it's been it's been awesome. So thank yeah. you for everything and getting the word out there and supporting us and. Just can't wait to meet you guys in person. Yeah, yeah. Well, and and I have to thank thank you for, I mean, for putting this together and sharing it with now sharing it with the world. Yeah, you know, yeah, and you. Uh, and and you should be so proud of this because, you know, again, I've seen, I've seen countless documentaries, um, and and this is head and shoulders above all the rest. I mean, this is truly the best documentary on spinal cord injury and, and, and paralysis and, and community and, and, and the, the dreaded rookie year. So, you know, it is, uh, so you should, 
uh, pat yourselves on the back and be proud of this because it's a it's a it's just wonderful so <laughs> bad shoulders, bad shoulders. Yeah, things, are, things aren't working as well as they used to oh man um, yeah well hopefully would, we're, yeah. we're just getting started and you know we can yeah. create some more awesome films that would yeah. be great yeah yeah we're, there's so much to do in so little yes. time in so little time uh, uh, hang in there with me we'll stop the recording but sure. i would just want to uh, uh chat a little bit and um so for all of you who joined us uh, on your lunch hour in 10 minutes and uh <laughs> you know and hung in there with us and enjoyed this and and hopefully we'll share this uh thank you and um and you know look at some of our other podcasts, but this is probably gonna be one of the best. So thanks.